freedom. And what they used to do to certain boys of certain standing around the age of 12 was they used to cut hair. They used to pull down the skin. And they used to get a, um, like a little chisel and hammer type thing and groove the skull and put the skin back into place. It had these nice grooves all the way down to here. Here's the thing. You were not allowed to make any noise or sign of pain while this was going on. And when it was done, you had to sit up and they'd give you some food and you had to eat it like it was a nice little function and everything was nice and, and so on. If you made noise, you would be ridiculed. But if you held the pose, you're the man. It's that simple. Now these men I met were the last people to get it done. 1930, they got it done at the age of eight. I'm sorry, the thought of doing that at the age of 38 is too much, let alone the age of eight for me. But these men were noble. They knew who they were, they knew what they were about. And we sat there in front of them and we did all the ritual and they gave me the coconut. Anyone ever visit the, the coke? Anyone ever tasted that? The cocoa, no thing. It tastes right, man, but. They were laughing at me because if you ever watch the documentary, you see I tasted it and they said, What is it like? I'm, it's interesting. <laughs> It was, it was amazing and they were saying thank God the sons of Africa are coming back and they were pleased to see me and they were, I gave them the names of my ancestors and they said it's definitely this village and I can't tell you the feeling to know that you have found out where your people came from and you're standing in the same place they came from there's no words for that there's no words and they made me kneel before them and they blessed me and they named me and forgive me Nigerians in the place because I'm not going to pronounce it right but the name again was Nwabufu now get it wrong. Someone come and say it, come and say it, come and say it. Uh, right. <laughs> and, um, but what it meant was through the sun, we remember the father. And that touched me. The next day, I went down to meet the ethnic people, King Ayamba, who was on the ethnic people. The ethnic people lived on the coast. That meant that they were the ones who dealt in selling Africans to the white man. So essentially, I'm going to meet the man whose ancestor is responsible for sending my ancestor to the white people. Boy, I remember being young and watching things like Roots on TV. And I used to come out from watching Roots and I didn't even want to talk to white people for two days. And I'm talking about people who are my friends, I didn't even want to see them. So how am I going to do meeting this man? This man was the nicest man in the world. And we went into the shrines called the Ekwe. And he went in there and he said, look, this is a talking drum. You heard of the talking drum? He said, this is a talking drum made out of brass. My ancestor had it made in Liverpool in 1845 and it would have cost 10 slaves. And that man looked at me and there was anger in his eye. And he turned around and he looked at this thing. This thing was an antique and he kicked it. And I'm thinking, no, no, don't do that. You can sell it on me. <laughs> and he kicked it and he said, for what? African sold that African for a piece of materialism to sit here gathering dust. Now I'm just going to deviate a little because when I look at that, when I look at the news and I see black on black crime for a mobile phone, it's the same damn thing. You're jacking here, you're jacking there, you're rushing man. Mark Root was in there. Bob Marley said, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. If you carry on that behavior, that's not what you're doing. And you're betraying me, you're betraying your family, you're betraying your ancestors. Think about it. That's done yet. I forgot what I was going to do. So we went to Jamaica now. We went to Jamaica and we went to the archives. And I saw my ancestor listed like a piece of cattle. Apparently in 1870s, you know how business people have to do their taxes every year? Just the same way I saw my answer. In 1870, they had to do, the, um, they had, what am I talking about? Eight, seven, seven, whatever it was, sometime, they had to do their slave returns. So they had to list, there was my ancestor listed as a piece of property. And you know what messed with my head? At the bottom it said, the above slaves are the property of Nancy Monteith a free woman of colour. I'm just going to put that out there to go with. And then we saw some of the things that they enslaved people with. They had a piece of thing they used to put around your head, a piece of metal, like a belt, used to put around your head and there was a plate on your mouth. Her kung pu, like that, as a punishment for slaves and I saw that. Now let me tell you, because I'm running out of time and I could talk to you tomorrow morning so I better move on to where I'm coming from here. 
This is the thing. I used to be proud that my ancestor was descended from a king. I had royal African blood in me and I was proud of that. Did you know that when William the, William the Conqueror won the Battle of Hastings in 1066, Tenkamenin, ancient king of Ghana could put 200,000 warriors in the field. He could have conquered England 21 times over. You didn't know that. Have you heard of the Dalumi Amazons? Women so fierce that the English had to send for extra weapons to take them out. Have you heard of um, in Timbuktu, there was a library before Europe even had the printing press. Have you heard that um, uh, there was a university in Timbuktu bigger than that of Paris and Cambridge and Oxford is now? Did you know that was part of our heritage? Yes. Europe, West Europe, East Europe has a proud history. Japan, China, all the places have a proud history. India, Pakistan, Bengali have a proud history. Africa has a proud history too. And we need to know that. We have helped shape what the world is today. And I used to be proud of the fact that that was my ancestor. That was my ancestor. But you know what I'm proud of? I'm proud of the fact he was a slave. Let me explain. I am proud of slavery. Slavery is an evil and abhorrent thing. But my ancestor and his peers, they had their names taken away from them. They had their identity taken away from them. They were taken away from their families. They never saw them again. They had to endure 90 days in the hold of a ship. 90 days with people vomiting and defecating and peeing and dying around them. And they came through that. And then they had to work in the field for 13 hours a day, six days a week. And then they were whipped by masters. Some of them had people doo-doo into their mouth and had to hold it in their mouth, the things they had to go through. And somehow, people like my ancestor found a way to prosper. He found a way to make enough money to buy his own freedom. When my father came to this land, he would stand at a bus stop, people would spit in his face. He would have to share a room with four other people. He had it. I sometimes, you know what? When I was young, I'm saying, you know what? Life is hard. I've got it hard. I'm black and the system's against me. You know what? My father had it twice as bad as me. And my great, 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 great grandfather had it ten times as bad as him. So I ain't got no excuse. It's time for me to stand up, to join hands with the African, with the West Indian, with the white man, with the Asian man, with the Oriental man. Because this world is where we all are. And we can stand up. We don't have to wait for somebody to put something in our plate. We gotta stand up and take it. Shoulders of giants, not said.